Hello there guys, welcome back to another video for your feedback. Now again, it's like always, make sure that you full power pen. Uh, what do I mean by that? You make sure that you add your full explanations and you do your all full working out as well. Because we need to know how to describe, how to explain things, as well as how to do any working out. Alright, let's get started. And the first one is a nice question about forces and take a look what's happening in this case. Now, should put different forces on the block and the diagram below shows the size of the forces and so on and so forth okay so here are the forces on it now the first one is uh, where will it move now we have the first one we can see that there's only one force on it and the force is going to uh, the right and five newtons therefore the force is going to go to the right okay so this one is straightforward now the next one is what we have is we have force uh, to the right which is 10 and we have a force to the left which is 10 now what happened is they are going to cancel each other out so therefore uh, the object is going to stay still so this here, here is the forces are balanced again if you got this incorrect make sure that you fix this up now here what we have is we have six on this side and four on this side so therefore what's going to happen to the object the object will want to move in the direction where there is greater force so there's greater force on the left hand side so therefore the force the object will move to the left now here what we have is we have one force to the right hand side it is eight now we have two forces pointing in this direction now since both of them are pointing in one direction we can add them up so this gives me eight now i have eight on the left have eight on the right so this is another case of balanced forces where the forces are balanced so therefore the objects stay still okay now let's move to this one now uh, which object can we use to measure forces now let's take a look now this here is a thermometer so this is a thermo meter why do we use a thermometer for to measure temperature so this is for temperature okay now this one here is this is a there this is called an ammeter now this is something that you're going to be learning uh, next year but ammeter used to measure current in a circuit okay and then we have a ruler and the ruler is to measure length or distance okay so therefore by the process of elimination we forces is this one here okay so this here is forces now what is the name of this uh, equipment so the name of this equipment this is called a Newton meter okay this is called a Newton meter to measure forces okay now why is it called a Newton meter because Newton has to be forced and so on and so forth okay so this is what we tend to use for example some of you may have a version of this uh, Newton meter at home to measure uh, the weight of your luggage uh, if you're going somewhere now let's take a look at this one now this one is another straightforward now the first one is what percentage uh, for the lamp uh, given as light okay and same thing what is the percentage wasted in this case now let's go for the lamp first okay now we see that the lamp is wasting 95 percent so therefore five percent of the energy is given out so what happened is we put 100 percent of the energy in and what happened is five percent is turned into light and the rest is wasted now likewise for the mixer we have 40 percent that is used to whisk it so therefore we're going to have how much 60 percent wasted energy okay so remember we can't have above 100 percent okay now the mixer becomes hot because some of the electrical energy is changed into which is wasted okay so what's happening here so it's become hot so what energy is that when things becomes hot so this is thermal energy now you can also say heat energy and that heat energy is lost now now again if you're not sure look at look over go back to the question so here's a mixer you can see that 60 percent is wasted because it gets hot okay because here is the keyword hot so therefore it has to be thermal energy or heat energy in this case okay now energy is wasted as sound okay in many appliances now which one sound is not wasted so which of these appliances sound is not wasted 
okay so here sound is wasted because you make noise to hit the kettle okay so here the kettle we only only need to boil water we only need to boil water okay we don't want it to make noise now here only need for light we don't want the bulb to make noise now the whistle the mixer the mixer we only need it to move to mix to move okay so we don't want to make noise so which one one two three four which of these four here let me zoom out which of these four appliance sound is not wasted so which of these four which one of these four makes sound and sound is useful here we go so this is useful so radio you need the sound to hear you need to listen to it. so therefore in this case which one is not wasted this is going to be the radio okay so this is going to be the radio now wh in which appliance has the highest percentage wasted okay let's go back to wasted so, so therefore we have we can see that 95 percent is wasted so this is the light bulb okay again so this is nice and easy question so far we earn ourselves we earn ourselves one two three three marks plus uh, this this two answer here so far five mark easy and done okay now what we have is we have a roller coaster we have a roller coaster here we go now the roller coaster goes up you can see here is up it's high above and then it goes down it goes up again and then all the way down all the way down the water okay now let's take a look now this is a question about energy now which two points they're going to have no kinetic energy so no kinetic energy means what happened no kinetic energy means that they are not moving now which way so which a b c d e f which options or which position are they not moving so therefore there's only two positions there's a so here they're not moving at all so that's what they got they get into uh, uh, the track whatever it is they got into the there and then f once the hit once they hit this the bumper that's when they stop so therefore it's going to be f and a or a and f in this case okay now at which point it's going to have the most gravitational potential energy now again gravitation gravitational potential energy so this here has to with height the higher you are the more potential energy you're going to have so therefore so therefore the highest here all the way up so therefore it's going to be a now that's why they're going to be a so that's why when you go on the roller coaster what do they do first so that you get in they say you get in and then they will pull they'll use a chain to pull the co roller coaster all the way up and that's when you're going to go down okay at which point does the car have some kinetic energy but least amount of gravitational potential energy okay now if he has the least okay so the most means the highest point so if it's the least potential energy the least potential energy the means going to be the lowest point so where here is the lowest point and has some kinetic energy means it's still moving a little so moving a little okay so moving a little so therefore the only option is going to be E because E is he's still moving down so before it hit the bumper so it's still moving down and it is at the lowest point so therefore it's going to be E because because E it is still moving so they're going to move move and hit the water and then it is the lowest into so the lowest height so therefore it's going to have the so lowest highest I misspelled this highest okay so this would be maybe highest okay now the car are not powered by motor so just like if you've been to, you know, on the roller coaster before okay you get on the roller coaster there's no motor at all so which forces cause the motor to move along the track from a to b okay so which forces force causes move along so this is going to be the weight of the track because what happened is when you go up 
So this here is going to have it's going to has mass. So if it has mass, it's going to have weight. So the weight is pulling down. So therefore, once it starts moving, it should be the weight pulling down due to gravity. Yeah. So remember the weight. This is bracket the force due to gravity. So the weight is the force due to gravity. Okay, that's why it's pulling it, it down all the way. Now, when the car splashes through the water, here's the word water at E, it slows down. Now, what force acts on it? Now, so since it is on water, so this is going to be water resistance. Okay, or we can say friction on water. Okay. Because it hits the water, so it's going to be resistant to the water. So therefore, the water is going to slow it down massively, and then we have the bumper. It's going to hit the bumper and eventually slows down. Okay. Now let's move to the next one. Again, if you got this wrong, make sure that you have the full annotation. So here's the annotation there. Here's the annotation. So this way, you un you are understanding why the answer is the answer. Okay. Now this is fill in the blank. Now when the car hit the bumper at F, it's what? What's going to happen? It's kinetic energy. So it's kinetic energy because it's still moving, it's kinetic energy, because what's happening if I go back here, so it's moved from D, it's moving down, it's still moving down the water, and then it's moving, it's moving, so therefore it's kinetic energy, it's transferred into what? It's transferred into sound energy, it's gonna hit it, so when you hit it, you hit, you, you hear it, and then we're going to have some small thermal energy in this case, not, not a lot, but small, okay, because you, you hear it, you hear it most of the time. Okay, here we go. Now here we have concrete. Now in the concrete, all we have is we have gaps in between them. As you can see we've got concrete there, and in between the concrete we have gaps. Now, what's going to happen to the size of the gaps when it gets hotter? Now, well, well let's draw this. So instead of drawing it uh, from the top, so this is the top view, I'm going to draw it from a side view. So we have the concrete gaps, concrete gaps, concrete gaps, concrete here. So okay, so these here are uh, the concrete okay and we got the gaps now what's gonna happen is when it gets hotter the concrete is going to expand so the concrete is going to expand and it's going to fill this gap here okay it's going to expand and fill this gap here it's kind of Okay. Now, what happened to the size of the object when they uh, heat up? So they. Okay. So. I'll say increase. In. The increase in size. Okay. So the increase in size. That's why they're going to fill in the gap. Now, when the temperature rises, what would happen to the gap between them? So the gap. So you can see here when the temperature rises. The concrete is going to expand. So let me use a different color pen here. It expanded. So now it's there. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. And what happened to the gap? The gap has become smaller. The gap has been filled up. The gap is getting filled. Okay. So therefore, what happens to the gap? So the gap. smaller the gap gets smaller okay. okay now when the temperature rises again what might happen to the section of the concrete if there was no gap now here if there's no gap what's going to happen is it might break so for example if there's no gap for example if they were just touching each other like this like this so when it gets hot what's going to happen is when it gets hot they want to expand so this part they want to expand so when they expand they're going to go into each other they're going to go into each other it's going to crack they're going to bend they're going to break away okay so that's why on the road if it's been if it's been if it's, if it's on the road the concrete road you see if there's no gaps then the road starts to crack up because of that okay so what happens to the section of this concrete so no gaps equal to Concrete will crack slash break. Okay. Now the gap between the concrete are filled with tar. Now tar becomes soft, so tar becomes soft when it's warm. Okay, so why is 
is it why is it important for the for this to happen okay now so here there's a gap yeah now what they've done is they fill the gap with tar okay and tar becomes soft when it's hot okay question is why does it, why is it important for this to happen okay now if it becomes soft if it becomes soft it means that okay it can flow slash squeezed 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 when gaps get smaller okay so therefore they can flow and they can squish up when and and then they can squish themselves up uh when the gap gets smaller and when the gaps go back to their normal size then they can squeeze back up again they can squeeze out again okay so this prevents stuff getting into the crack that's why they use the tar for in this case yeah but uh, we're going to leave it there all right so now here what do we have we have speed okay good again let's do this so speed is equal to distance over time now in meters per minute so per minute now let's take a look we have minutes here there's no need to convert so therefore it's going to be 26 divided by 80 again use a calculator so it's going to be 0 0.44 here we go if you got this wrong for working out now uh, what is it per second so per second again so this Second, so therefore S equal to the Oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. It's not three seconds, that's wrong. Anything multiple multiply by sixty. So going to be zero point oops zero point zero four okay it's per second nice one okay now at this speed how long will it take to unwind the tape now so tape okay so to run the tape the which format to use which run the tape at the speed of this one here okay now how long will it take now again so we're going to use we know that distance equal to speed multiplied by time so rearrange time is equal to distance over speed in this case okay now the distance we know is 260 now the speed is what the speed is given to us in the is there so the speed is there so therefore it's going to be 0 0.1.08 i'm going to get 2 for this 0.7 second Again, if you got this wrong, make sure that you have the full working out. Again, the only equation that you're remembering is distance equal to speed multiplied by time, and then you need to rearrange into convert and so on. Now, in fact, it takes slightly longer for this than this to rewind, well, for this to rewind the tape, okay, than this to rewind the tape, okay? Now, to rewind the tape quickly, a different mode is used, which has a maximum speed of this, but in reality, it's going to take longer why does this take longer okay now the reason why it takes longer is first of all okay it takes time to reach the maximum speed so this speed here 0 0.1 0 point, sorry 1.08 okay it so as soon as we start the motor we don't just get the speed straight away the speed has to build up to that amount okay that's why it means so it takes time for the speed to build up to that amount okay all right and then let's move on now what we have is we have a metal rod now metal rod iron rod this is a solid now solid there's only one one so there's only conduction in solid okay so solid again so remember when we did the practical with the rod okay the heating rod that you had so only conduction okay now what do we have we have okay so bottom of the large tank the water next to the heater becomes warm what happened to the uh to the, what hap what will happen to the warm water next to the heater okay give you answer in this case okay. 
All right. Now the water's warmed. Okay. So what's going to happen to that? Okay. What's going to happen to that? So what would happen to give you a reason for your answer? Now, first of all, what's going to happen to the warm water? The warm water will rise. So if you have the large container, okay, warm water is going to go up. Now, why will it go up? Remember what we said? Okay, what we said? So water, molecules or particles, okay, So the vibrant mole. Okay. Now, if the vibrant mole, what's going to happen to them? They're going to. Oops. They're going to spread out. So they're going to spread out more. Okay. This reduces the density. Okay, so the vibrate more, so therefore they spread out. Okay, and this reduces the density, and that's why they rise up. Okay, so remember convection. So this here is convection. Okay, now why heat not be transferred in the way in the metal rod? Okay, now metal rod. Okay, so metal rod, so metal rod. So this here is. A solid okay so this here is a solid okay now well unfortunately this is wrong okay yeah it is a solid but why why the question says why okay so I'd say being a solid being a solid the particles cannot move they're going to move. They are tightly bonded. Okay? So they only vibrate in a fixed position. Alright? So this part is extra. So that is why Iron rod can't transfer energy by convection. Okay, good. Now, in the liquid, what we have is if some particles have enough kinetic energy, they can escape from the surface. So, here from the surface. Now, what is this one? So, from the surface, so what process happens even when the is well below the boiling point? So, this is evaporation. Okay, because evaporation can happen at any temperature. So, you pull some water, you throw some water on the floor. Okay, you come back, let's say, the next day, the water is gone, evaporation. Okay, now, how will this affect it? Well, how will this affect the left in the container? Okay, so what will have the temperature? The temperature cools down. Okay, now, for example, when you sweat, so when you sweat, so let's say this is your skin, when you sweat, so all those water, you sweat, they evaporate. So when they evaporate, they take the heat with them. They take the heat away with them. So this cools down the temperature of your skin. That's why you, you sweat. You sweat, so your body is sweating to make sure that your temperature drops. Good. Okay, so this is terminal velocity. We've done this one before. Now, what happened? What happened at 180? 180 is here. So what happened at 180? Okay, so this is when the parachute opens so parachutes so parachute opened okay that's what happened and at one second that's when it's landed okay so is that okay landed on ground okay so this one's straightforward the question just say what happened so this is what happened uh, when there's an increase in air resistance the uh uh, the speed increases what happens is this so here we go so uh, how did this take place so this takes place uh, where is it so there's an increase in air resistance and the thing the speed increases how does the graph explain this 
Okay, so this is here. That's when air resistance starts to increase. Okay. Okay, so as the speed increases, so you can see here, so from A, so let's say from here, for example, from 4 to 6, the speed is going up. But how do we know that air resistance increases because of this slope here? Okay. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so the graph curves between A and B. Okay, so it's one mark. The graph curves between A and B. Okay. Uh, we can also say the acceleration gets less. Okay, so this is what's happening here. So you can see, look how steep this is. Look how shallow this is now. Okay. Now, uh, two sections where the air resistances are equal, so equal and opposite. So this is when terminal velocity, so terminal velocity has been reached. So this is going to be when, so this is going to be here, B, when this is when it's flat. Now, now it's not the entire part of B, okay, just when the plot is flat, this part here, this part here, this part here when it's flat, and D, because D is the flattest in this case. So these are the two. So it's going to be B and D, okay. Now, ideally, it should be like this. So the graph should be like this. Go A, B, flat for a little bit, and then drop down. Oops, drop down. And then here, and then down. Yeah, so the A, the B part should be lit. So it reaches here, and then a little bit longer. But, uh, okay, that's that's the graph they give us. We're going to deal with that. Okay. Now, use the graph to estimate how far he has traveled. How far he has traveled between 180 and 130. Okay, estimate 180 and 130. Okay, now what do we have? So this here, how far is going to be the area on the graph. So this is going to be the area of the rectangle. Okay, so the area of the rectangle is going to be from here. Okay, again, let me just delete everything. So this way we're not confused with everything. So it's going to be this here to this point. Again, I'm just taking it as a rectangle here because I need to estimate. Okay, so let's zoom in. Now we need to know how much this here is. Okay, it could be five. We'll see what happens. Okay, so 180 to this is going to be, wait, so 180 multiplied by, let's take a look how much it is properly, let me zoom in, okay, so if I go straight from here, yeah, I think it's this one, so 5, 6, So here we go. So this is the that's how far has traveled between this these two things. Okay. Now why can this only be an approximate figure? Okay. Now why is this an approximate? Now look at this here. Okay. Let me use the difficult pen. Now here we have a small curve which is very hard to read. Okay, so we have a small curve here, which is very hard to read. Okay, so so this line is six. So this is here six meters per second. Now it took some time. It took some time to read six. It doesn't just go down and then six. Yeah. So this does not happen. So what happens is it curves a little bit. It curves a little bit, and then reaches six in this case. So what we're going to say we're going to say the following. Okay, so we're going to say. Speed takes time to reach six meters per second. Okay, or we can say uh, speed is difficult 
to read okay so you can see that this speed here this part here it is very difficult to read in this case okay so what's going on here is it going straight in we don't know okay so that's why we need to take an approximation to make it easy on us okay hello yeah and we can mention that the curve at the corner there as well okay now this one was fine okay now the equation is given to us we need to work out the weight where the weight is there so weight is mass multiplied by gravity here's the equation now what's the mass 0 0.06 what's gravity it's 10 okay come on so this one is the free marker so giving you guys the mark for free it's going to be 0 0.6 newton 0 0.6 newton here we go okay because remember weight is a force so weight is a force so force measured in newton okay all right so what do you have here now we have okay so we need two complete the sentence in this case so we need to pick one okay so what we have is we have the object is stationary so stationary means it is at rest so therefore what's going to happen what's, what would it be it's going to be same as okay so the lift force and the weight are the same so therefore they are balanced so therefore the object is going to be stationary good now what does the word accelerate mean so now we did this one a long time ago so the word acceleration acceleration is rate of change of velocity okay if you got this wrong fix it now what is the direction of the resultant force on the falling object okay okay blah 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 okay blah blah okay here we go so the motor is switched off so the motor is switched off and it accelerate downwards so where is the resultant force the resultant force is going to be downwards because it is falling downwards yeah so this one's straightforward where would it fall where would it fall where would it fall it is falling downwards yeah this is just uh, logic and this is very easy now does momentum increase decrease or stay the same okay so what happened why okay now the momentum is going to increase now why does it increase it increases because it is accelerating okay because it's getting faster how do we know if it's getting faster well it tells us it is accelerating downwards it's falling faster downwards here we go done let's move to the next one now here is we have the paint okay now put them in the order uh, which one would be dry first dry first okay so which one would be dry first hmm. okay okay so drop of water is placed on each one of them okay so they were then heated up by a radiator up, uh, above them okay so radiator was above them okay so the heat was coming from above so let me just do this drop of water was placed so this is drop of water placed on each of them and they were then heated up with a radi radi radiator held on meter above so the heater was coming down so above them like this okay right now let's take a look now the shiny surfaces is going to reflect the heat away okay now shiny black now it is shiny black okay let's take a look uh, shiny matte matte shiny is going to reflect it as well black is going to be absorbed and then it's going to radiate it okay now which one suggest so the order in this case so the first one is going to be the matte black that's the that's that will be the best one and then the last one will be the shiny white okay now let's me zoom in okay shiny let's zoom in then we have what we have the shiny black we have the matte black okay 
Uh, I'm gonna have the let's go with matte. Yeah, it's a matter. Matte white. Okay. <coughs> now, let's choose the answer. All right. Okay. Now, what happens is Matt, what we'll do, Matt is going to absorb energy slash infrared radiation better than shiny. Okay. Now black, the black color, is going to absorb energy slash infrared radiation better than white. Okay. Now we also know that shiny. And white, they are good reflector of in far infrared radiation or heat energy. Okay, and we know that black, they are good absorbers. It was good. Emitters, okay, of infrared radiation. Now, if you got this wrong, if you got this question wrong, make sure that you have the full uh, explanation. So this is the full explanation because we are here to know how to fix ourselves. Yeah, we are here to fix yourself. So this is how you fix yourself. Okay. Now, what we have here, we have convection. Okay. Now, this is remark. We did this before. Remember. Uh, the tube and so on and so forth okay let's get a crack on so first of all what's going to happen okay potato 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 so you heat the air here what happened now this air the air goes up hot air goes up cold air goes down yes that's the simple thing but we want to know we need to want to explain what is going to happen all right now let's put it in bullet points again so this is what we need to have <coughs> Air molecules or particles gain energy. Okay, so once they gain energy, what happens? They move faster. Okay, now remember, <coughs> air is a gas. So, gas, the particles are very far away, so they move, they can move, they move faster, yeah? <coughs> okay, so they move faster. Okay, because they're already moving, they move faster, yeah? Okay, and when they move faster, what happens is they spread out. Okay, they spread out, so therefore they expand. Okay. Now the gas expands, yeah? The particles, so the particles do not grow bigger. It's just the gas itself expands because... The gas particles, let's say the gas is like this. So I got one, I got one, two, three, four, five particles of gas. And when they s expand, it means they are just spreading out. So one, two, three, four, five. So st they stay the same size, but they just get further from each other. Okay, so therefore becomes less dense. Okay, so. Hot air rises up, rises, rises, transferring heat energy with them. Okay, so it is the hot air that rises up, and when the hot air rises up, they are taking the heat energy with them. Okay, now the question says. Uh, 
to the at the top then that's where we stop yeah so from the bottom to the top that's it that's from the bottom to the top okay only three marks let's go to the next one now metal skews metal skews so these are solid so therefore which method is it so this is conduction now remember convection takes place in liquid plus gas Okay, and the, when the potato is taken out of the oven, they are start to cool. So just one factor will affect how fast it will cool down. Okay, now what factors will it affect how fast will the potato cool down? Okay, uh, this has to do with the temperature of the room. Okay, so if the room is colder, colder than the potato that potato will use more energy okay this will also okay so let's leave it there now the potato is kept hot and maybe wrapped with shiny what's going to happen so let's let's do this why does this keep the potato hot again shiny what does it do so shiny aluminum foil what does it do it reflects heat back to okay hello there all right let's crack on so we have we have uh, described the uh, motion of this tracker now what we have is we have the tracker now we know that the forces are balanced now if the forces are balanced the forces are balanced this means that it's going to be traveling at a constant speed Okay, so this is the answer for this one. Now, uh, it comes on a dry part of the field where the resistive force is are much less. Now, if the forward force is in change, how will this affect the trolley? Now, if we have the track, so the force is the same. Now, the friction force is much less. So, what is going to happen? therefore it's going to accelerate because the force or the resistive force is much less it means that the resultant force pointing to the left will, much, will be higher so therefore it accelerates okay at a higher constant speed okay still constant but at a higher constant speed in this case okay all right now here we have a nice graph Let's take a look what we can do. We have a nice graph there. Okay, now here we need to plot the graph. Okay, now we're going to pause and plot the graph and show you what to where to get those two marks. Okay, now the first thing is you need to plot the points properly. So we have zero here, zero, zero, we have eight, 
and then 40 we have 16 and then we have 18 80 sorry we have 24 here and we have uh, uh, 120 and then we have 32 which is here 32 which is here and then we have 160 and then we have 14 and then we have 200 now you need to use a ruler here okay now I've done it like this because I, because uh, it is I have to do it on the uh, the computer but you need to use a ruler and the points must be seen so you get two marks for the points need to be there the correct order and then you draw your straight line there straight forward now calculate the speed of the tractor now the speed this is the gradient okay now if you remember the gradient what we have is we have the change in y the change in x okay now looks like for the change y now the change y is going to be 200 but if I change the x to be 40, then we get 5 meter per second. Again, remember, so I've done the big triangle. So this here, this big here would be my change in the y, and this big here would be with the change in the x axis. So this is the gradient, and the answer is 5 meters per second in this case. Now, uh, more resistive, more resist resistance, it travels now at 4. Okay, calculate. The time we need to travel okay so how can we do this now we know distance is equal to speed multiplied by time so we arrange this time is equal to distance over speed the distance we know is 200 the time we know is far uh, sorry four okay and then we get 50 seconds okay now draw on the graph the line that shows this so we know it goes 200 uh, and 50 seconds okay and then we have four meters per second in this case okay now let's take a look what do we have so 50 seconds okay well so we have a time in seconds 50 seconds is even more Okay, so 50 seconds is more 4 meters per second. How can we draw this? Okay, now what do we know is we know that in 50 seconds, so 50 seconds, it's going to go to 200 meters, which is all the way up. Okay, now unfortunately we don't have it on the graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out uh, how far would it go in, how far would it go in, 50, uh, sorry, in the, uh, 40 seconds, so the speed is the same, so the speed is 4. Okay, the speed is 4 meters per second, multiplied by the time. The time is going to be 40, so therefore it's going to go to 15, uh, sorry, 160 meters. So therefore, at 404, 40 is going to go to 60, or is it here? right now let's check this again so if we miss anything so speed gradient change y over change in x so 200 over 45 meters per second now this one here again distance speed multiplied by time distance over is distance over speed so distance we know 200 uh, speed we know is 450 now we need to draw a line to show this now what happened is the graph goes all the way to 40 so what I've done is I've worked out okay how far would it go in 40 seconds so the speed is 44 which is here uh, the time is 40 now why 40 because that's the graph goes to 40 and gives me a distance of 160 so therefore 160 is here so therefore we're going to have a straight line from 0 to 60 again use a ruler for that and that's how the second line will look like now the next one is acceleration is change in velocity over time so v is the final velocity you take away initial velocity so 6 is the final velocity and 0 is the initial velocity over 15 and 0 0.4 over there okay now here we go we have a jumpy someone jumping now find the acceleration so acceleration is going to be the gradient of the graph which is change y or change in x now 2 this is 2 so from here uh, to 4 4 is there so we need to work out this one here so we got to this okay so this here is my change in x 
and this here is my change in y so change in y goes from 15 to 30 so get therefore going to be 30 take away 15 over 4 take away 2 this is my change okay so 30 take away is 15 over 2 okay so how much do i get if i use the calculator it's going to be 7.5 this is the answer 7.5 you can see how easy it is to get uh, three marks again if you got this wrong make sure that you have the full working out there okay now describe much details what's going to happen after four seconds so after four seconds is here so after four seconds is this and this so we need to talk about this and then we need to talk about this part here okay so let's see so let's talk about from four to five so from four to five seconds what happened okay so it slows down okay now how do we know it slows down it slows down slash decelerates now how do we know this we can clearly see that it is going from 30 all the way down to zero in this particular case okay Okay, and then from five to six seconds, what happened? Okay, so it's still moving upwards in the opposite direction. So what happened is it's jumping. So let's say it jumps. It jumps, it jumps, and then here it slows down. So it's jumping, you can see it's jumping. So let's say it jumps, and then here it starts to slow down because the, uh, the how is it, the rubber cord is stretching, so it slows down, and then once it slows down, what happened? So the bungee jump start to pull it, to pull him back up again. Okay, so it starts to fall, slows down, and then the rubber band put it, put him back up again. Okay, so here I'm going to put uh, stop for a bit. So stops. So I'll say, was it? Uh, so the rubber cord stops the fall. Okay. So this is what happened, stop the fall, and then it starts to move in the opposite direction. Again, make sure that you have the full explanation down. Okay, and this is it. Okay, so we, it looks like we've reached uh, the end of the questions. Again, so anything that you missed up, uh, make sure that you fix yourself. Again, so make sure that you stay awake for the whole thing. So we need to know why the physics is this. Okay, again, fix yourself, stay awake, and control yourselves.